Hello again. This video is an extension of the previous video. We're still working with the 433 megahertz key fob. The, uh, here, let me show you, grab this here. This was the original design, uh, not original design, original matching, where I had matched it outside of the key fob case and I had mentioned that you, in real world, that real world applications, you want to match the antenna inside the fob or inside the enclosure or whatever you're using it in. So I did that. I took a bare board, I connectorized it with a little IPEX connector and I put it inside my key fob case. So, uh, okay, I had to turn this off because I had to use the spectrum analyzer. So let me turn this, I turn this back on. Let's go to, uh, let's see, recall. Recall state, because I had already calibrated this and, and zeroed out the port and everything. State, there we go. And this is what it looks like inside the fob, inside my hand, pressing a button. It's gonna bounce around a little bit, of course it will. There's nothing you can do about that. I, I can't change how my, how my body reacts. Uh, you know, it's going to move around a little bit, but this is just fine. Uh, so I'm at, uh, you know, 433 megahertz minus, you know, it depends where it is, minus 22, minus 27. Yeah, yeah I know someone's going to say, well, it'd be better if whatever. I mean, this is, this is pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I've, I've also, uh, I, I'm going to do some range testing. Uh, at the end of the video, I, it's, I've been trying to do it for two weeks. It's been raining every day. I've done some range testing already, uh, so I know that this thing works very well. I'm getting 600 feet uh, at a zero dBm output, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, there's a competitor's fob out there that claims, uh, what do they claim, uh, 750 feet, I believe, and I, I bought one of theirs, and it looks like they're running at about zero dBm as well. Uh, from, from what I can tell, I, I, I uh, piped the output right into the spectrum analyzer, and I I saw that. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, the values, uh, the original values here outside the fob uh, was a, what was it, 72 nano Henry inductor, 15 picofarad capacitor. That changed to a 56 nano Henry inductor and a 13 picofarad capacitor. And uh, there you go. I mean, it's, that's all it took. Was, was putting it inside the fob case and, uh, and matching it. So the, the next portion of the video I had mentioned about um, uh, whip antennas and how they like to see a ground plane counterpoise. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is my receiver. And yeah, I put a battery pack on there because I'm actually going off in a field and, and I, obviously I can't power it that, you know, through a, through a, a line a main. Uh, so I put a battery pack on there and I put this on there. I put this antenna on. They started thinking, you know, this thing kind of looks like a bomb. So I, I put not a bomb on there. Hopefully that'll, uh, uh, that'll stave off any concern <laughs> anyone might have if they, they see it. Um, but I do want to point out uh, in the next portion of the video how a counterpoise ground plane affects a whip antenna. Um, some people don't, don't know that. Uh, uh, I, I, I remember I did a uh, job for a customer, another key fob actually, a uh, guy down in Miami, and uh, uh, you know, he wanted this long distance uh, you know, key fob, and it worked great. The, the fob worked great, and the antenna worked great. I picked out one of these antennas, that very similar to this, and I had always assumed that his, his enclosure was going to be a metal enclosure, and I said, okay, put it on the, you know, stick it out, so it didn't work very well at all. Uh, Come to find out, his enclosure was this uh, polycarbonate enclosure, and there was no metalization around it at all. And so the, the antenna didn't work very well at all. And I, I gave him a suggestion. Uh, he kind of laughed at me at first, but it, it proved right. I, I told him, take some tinfoil and just, you know, poke a hole in it, put it over the top, uh, you know, give that, uh, that antenna a little bit of a plane there, and sure enough, it lit right up and, you know, Obviously, we uh, we changed the design. Uh, his, his he changed his design to have some metalization under under the antenna, and it works fantastic now. So, on to the next portion of the video where I will talk about the uh, the counterpoise ground plane 
As promised, here is the portion of the video where I talk about a whip antenna. I have uh, my 433 megahertz whip antenna attached to a polycarbonate case. There is no uh, counterpoise or ground plane. There's uh, The bench has is, is got a lot of metal in it, so that might affect the, the upcoming uh, results. There's a lot of metal around here. This is not the optimal uh, setup to do this. I'm just, once again, showing off that this is, uh, this is a real thing, you know, that these whip antennas uh, need a counterpoise and that uh, it, it greatly affects their performance. So here's my, uh, my VNA, I've got it set to 433 megahertz uh, and I've got, uh, I've got it patched right in to my, my, uh, my, my whip antenna here. I've got a, a little uh, uh, jumper board here off of Amazon. Uh, to, to, to connect the IPEX connectors together because I don't have a adapter. So anyway, here it is at 433 megahertz. Doesn't look great. Doesn't look good at all, actually. We'll go to Smith chart here. It doesn't look good. Not, uh, uh, not good at all here. So we're going to add, I decided not to make a casserole today, and I'm going to use this pan, punch the hole in it, and I'm just going to slide it over top of the antenna and you can see voila it is coming into tune it's it's uh markedly different uh the the uh the, the frequency has shifted higher it even says in the data sheet in this which is uh uh the, which is common with the whip antennas the if, if you use a, a ground plane that's smaller than what the antenna was originally tuned with Frequency is going to shift higher. Uh, if this is a big problem, I, I guess you can go in there and, and add some match and, and shift it or, uh, or uh, try to use a bigger, a bigger ground plane. Uh, I can try simulate a bigger ground plane. Let's see here. I, I bought these metal signs here. We've, we've got caution or uh, beware of dog. We'll see which one works better. Actually, we're going to put both of them on here. It's just to make a, a larger larger plane. We're going to stick it right under the antenna there and we're going to see, I think I have a, oh, I think I have a loose cable there. There we go. Well, I had to, and I think the cable's loose. You can see that it shifted, the uh, the frequency is shifting to the left closer to 433. We're at 441 right now, 439. You can see that the larger plane made a difference. I was not expecting my cable to come. There we go. We can uh, we can see. There we go. I keep adding metal, and it's shifting lower. We're at four, yeah, 442 right now. But uh, but anyway, that's that's the example I wanted to show that the the whip antenna needs a counterpoise. If you don't have one it's not going to work well. So it needs to be around that, that metal plane. Uh, anyway, I hope, uh, I hope this has helped any. Okay, we're finally here doing range testing. Uh, I have my helper with me today. Some uh, cheap labor. Let's see here. <laughs> and I, I, mapped out the, I mapped out the entire uh, uh, field on Google Earth so I know where uh, you know, 500 feet, 750 feet, uh, 1,000 feet are. So we're going to try this. Um, obviously, we're going to start at 500. We can uh, go all the way back there. There's my truck back there. Uh, the, where the truck is, is a, actually in front of the truck is 500 feet. So we'll get to there first. All right, you ready? Yeah. And uh, it's, you get the walkie-talkie. You're going to tell me if you got reception. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're here at uh, 500 foot mark, and we're getting good reception. It's, uh, I got a perfect line of sight here, and uh, yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm hearing that uh, we're getting reception. I should point out that I was able to change the baud rate to 10 kilo, uh, 10K. It was at 250K, because uh, the previous design was a tag that, uh, more autonomous it didn't have a button it was just it just continuously transmitted every three seconds woke up transmitted and we wanted that on time as short as possible to save battery life so we set the 250 uh 
changing to 10K, uh, I know will get you uh, some more receiver sensitivity. So we're gonna keep going now. Okay, we are at 750 feet and we are still going strong. Perfect, line of sight. I uh, should also point out this transmitter is set to zero dBm output. 750 feet, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna have to look at this on Google Earth, but it looks like we're 800 to 850 feet is the maximum range line of sight on this one. Uh, at zero dBm, 20, uh, uh, 10 kilobaud, uh, 10k baud rate, I'm sorry. So 800 feet, 850 feet, something like that, that's pretty good. If I were to bump this up to a, uh, I think the maximum is a plus 10 output, I'm sure I could get to the 1,000 feet. Now keep in mind, 1,000 feet is not, uh, it's not a requirement. And uh, I guess I should point out that this antenna that I made, I'm not saying that this is the best antenna in the world and it always will be. I'm just saying uh, this worked pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Uh, yeah, I spent a couple hours on it, drew it up, tuned it, and uh, I'm getting 800, 850 feet off of uh, you know, a zero dBm output, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna go back to the lab, uh, button this, uh, this old video series up, and, uh, and we'll talk later.